is going on everybody welcome back to phones and drones so here we are I wanted to give you a play-by-play -play kind of walkthrough of my experience with our first road trip in the new Tesla 2020 model 3 standard range plus and basically I'm going on a little over 200 miles on a road trip and I'm really curious to see if it's obtainable if it's really doable uh, with the standard range plus the common misconception and what Tesla does not tell you is just because the car is rated for, in this case, 250 miles, that does not really equate to true to life usage. So basically what I mean by that is this vehicle will not basically get you 250 miles. Long story short, you're looking much more around 200 because there's so many other factors that go into consideration. The uh, driving style, weather, AC, there's so many factors that impact your battery life. It's really not true to state 250 and uh, Unfortunately, the way the ratings go with the EPA and all that, it's, it's a difficult scenario right now. But keep that in mind. This is a pretty typical trip. It's not too far. It's in Florida. Uh, it, it's not hilly, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm really curious to see how it's going to work out. So what I did, I'm literally just starting my trip now. I have 135 miles on this charge and I want to see what's going to happen. We basically have already mapped our trip and it says we need to drive for an hour and a half which is 67 miles to get to our charger. It's wanting us to stop near Orlando. It's actually in Altamont Springs for those of you that are familiar with the location. But I really just want to see how autopilot's going to do taking us 90% of the way, how really navigate on autopilot is going to do with that extra you know full self-driving uh, charge that they want you to incur it is a seven thousand dollar upgrade now and that's really what you're paying for you're paying for the navigate on autopilot the advanced summon feature and the promise of full self-driving on city streets and all that where it's supposed to be able to recognize uh, green lights and red lights and obviously stop signs but right now that's all that is is a promise and you're buying it for just that. So keep that in mind. Aside from that guys, I'm not gonna keep you on this whole video. We'll really chime in as we go. We'll see with traffic, we'll see with uh, you know weather conditions if they change. Luckily it looks like a gorgeous day out here. So hopefully it won't be impacted too much by that. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off for now and we'll be back in a few. One thing I did neglect to mention that I wanna bring to your attention, when you actually do enter in your destination and it goes ahead and schedules your quick charging stops where it believes you'll need to go. Um, it does actually tell you how long you need to go and charge at this location and what your battery charge will be at when you arrive. So in our case, like I said, we're going to be supercharging in Altamont Springs and we're supposed to get there with 22% battery and we'll need to charge there for 25 minutes in order to make it back to our destination in Jacksonville. And when we get there, we're supposed to be able to go about 16% left when we reach that destination. So I just wanted to point that out to you as well. We're on autopilot, we're gonna go ahead and cruise, and we'll, uh, we'll be back. One little call out I wanted to bring on our first leg of the trip we were actually on a toll road and we got a message on the navigation we were on navigate on autopilot saying unable to maintain current driving condition due to the toll booth being in the I guess in the way of the lane so it automatically kicked off navigates autopilot and went straight on to just autopilot not a big deal but just one thing to bring to your attention anyway this specific example was actually a sun pass lane and what was happening is you have to actually maintain a much slower speed. It's about 25 to 35 miles an hour in order for them to scan your pass. And if that wasn't done, um, you actually get a ticket in the mail if you don't have actually a sun pass in general, you'll receive a ticket. So I'm not sure how that correlates to the system, but the Tesla knew that there was some sort of toll booth and it did notify us of. But just one little call out I just wanted to let you know. As soon as we got through that, it was clear sailing again. It went to navigate on autopilot and there was no issue. I want to give you another quick update on our way to our first charging stop. So one thing that you don't really think about when you're thinking about buying autopilot and all that and is it worth it or whatnot 
is how convenient it is not just to cruise on a highway but when there's actually substantial amounts of traffic how you see we're stopped it's been stop and go for the last few minutes but I'm not sure if you guys can see a clear view on this map but it's been a quite bit of a distance on red and a little orange now until we clear up a little bit before it gets back to back traffic again but it is so convenient to let the Tesla just do this for you and you don't need full self-driving for this autopilot itself will do the trick so if you've been on the fence do I need autopilot or navigate on autopilot this feature right here has really been uh, really a relief and less fatigue for the driver um, because of having to not pay attention as substantially to stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. You're aware of your surroundings, you're paying attention, and you can just intervene when you need. Uh, it's not a lot of things I've heard other people talking about, but in traffic, if you're going to do road trips, this is a game changer right here. Yes, it's nice to be able to zip through the lanes of traffic and all that, but you're inevitably going to hit traffic, and this is an awesome little feature for it is when it's in stop and go. As we made it to our first stop to supercharge, we just got here and in about 10 minutes, we regained 62 miles of range. This is actually a pretty great charger. When I first plugged in, and I apologize, I didn't have the camera running, but when I first had it plugged in, we were actually at 124 kilowatts, which is phenomenal. I never see it that high, honestly, on my Model 3. Maybe it was because I was so low on a charge, but it was awesome. We have literally gained 62 miles already in 10 minutes. That's pretty phenomenal. One thing I do want to call out too, for those of you not aware, is if you actually open up your app, which you can see I have mine opened here, if you walk away from your vehicle, it actually tells you how much longer you need to stay in your location for uh, before you continue your trip. In our case, it says 15 minutes to continue on your trip as well as obviously letting you know where your current range is. But keep that in mind, guys. I hope you can see it here. Uh, but that is just one other call out that I didn't want to uh, bring to our attention. Aside from that, the ride was actually pretty intermittent. So the construction in Orlando, if you guys are familiar with the area, is always terrible. I-4 is ridiculous. And I had numerous issues actually on autopilot where it didn't recognize new lane structures from where it uh, shifted from. Maps update regularly, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's not going to be a permanent issue, but if you're in an area of high construction and routes are usually changed, uh, and what I mean by that, new roads are built to take place of the other roads, not just adding a lane, that could be an issue for autopilot. Again, just wanted to really let you guys know that if you are in that kind of area. But aside from that, during all that stop and go traffic that I talked to you guys about, it was great. Autopilot, uh, Navigate on Autopilot, I should say, did its job. It did pretty, pretty good. Uh, no complaints at all about that. So we're going to go ahead and finish topping this up. I'm going to walk away actually for a few minutes to go grab a drink and I will I'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. We'll be back. So we were able to charge back up to 200 miles. We stayed a little longer than what they said we needed to for our route to continue. But I had a couple minutes, I actually ran into the store to grab a couple things, and now we are ready to head back on our way. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the supercharger, and we'll continue on. Alright, we'll let the port close. You can see exactly what it did. We'll actually get there, it said, with... 19% battery. Let's go ahead and get the show on the road. We have went about 53 miles since our charge, and I just wanted to bring one thing to your, your attention while I'm thinking about it as well. So, when we left, we left with right at 200 miles of range. Well, we went 53 miles and have 129 left as we speak. That does not equate to 200 miles. So there is a pretty big discrepancy there. Um, and why I'm bringing this up is because just because you see 200 miles is not exactly true to what you might get. Again, depending on the driving conditions and all that. However, ever since we went and got on the interstate, which was not even a mile 
moved away from where the supercharger was, we have been on autopilot. So this is purely the computer and the car guiding us and using the, the requested speed, which you see right now, it's been about 77 miles per hour the entire way. This isn't even taking into account if you were actually driving it yourself instead of autopilot. So there's definitely range loss as you drive. You can see I'm only at 270 WH per mile. Um, that's not too bad. You wanna keep it between, I believe, 250 and 270 to 280 for ideal range. Uh, if you know better, guys, comment down below if that's incorrect and let me know what it should be. But from what I've heard, you wanna keep it in this range. So, having said that, it's pretty ideal, but the range is still not keeping true to what we originally were supposed to have. That's it, guys. Just wanted to throw that in there. We're going to continue our trip. We'll be home in about 45 minutes or so, and we will touch base when we finish. All right, guys. Thank you for following us on this journey. You can see we have actually finally made it back home, and we have 49 miles to spare. Not that much, but it did correlate exactly how uh, autopilot said it should. The navigation was on point. It took us right around three and a half to four hours to get back. That's a little longer than what it normally would take. And remember, I did charge for a little while longer at the charging station just to make sure I had plenty of charge to get back due to traffic in that area and all that. But having said that, we made it back. The experience was pretty awesome. If you guys have never used autopilot, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to do it just to try it out. Uh, they give Tesla loaner cars for overnight drives. Get it for the night. Take your significant other out. See what you think. You really cannot appreciate it until you have tried it. Uh, I know that's pretty simple to say. Don't knock it until you try it. This is definitely one of those scenarios. But again, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, thumbs up this video, and stay tuned for number, number, number of new videos coming out from us. Thanks, guys. Peace.